of pit bucks and cutie marks. If I'm going to tell you about the adventure of my life, explain how I got to this place with these people and why I did what I'm going to do next, I should probably start by explaining a little bit about pit bucks. What is a pit buck? A pit buck is a device worn on the foreleg just above the hoof, issued to every pony in the stable when they become old enough to start work. A blending of unicorn pony magic and science, your pit buck will keep a constant measure of your health and even help administer healing potencies and other medicine. Track and organize everything in your saddle packs, assist in repairs, and keep in all matter of notes and maps available at a hoof tap. Plus, it allows you to listen to the stable's broadcast whenever you would like, as it can tune into and decrypt just about any radio frequency. And that's not all. A pony's pit buck generates a EFS, an eyes forward sparkle, that will indicate direction and help gauge whether the ponies or creatures around you are hostile. And perhaps, most impressively, a pit buck can magically aid you in a fight for brief periods of time through the use of the SATS, the Stable Tech Arcane Targeting Spell. Oh, and a feature not to be forgotten. So, if a pony somehow got lost, don't ask me how you could get lost in a stable, but it does happen on occasion, then any pony who need the lost pony's tag could find them instantly. It can even be made to glow like a lamp. So yes, pit bucks really are a testament to unicorn pony arcane science. And yes, having a pit buck is a big advantage. So, with how wonderful and miraculous all that just sounded, it's hard to impress upon ponies who never lived in a stable just how ordinary, how pedestrian a pit buck was in the eyes of the ponies living in stable too and why I was disappointed to have one as my cutie mark. Every pony in Stable 2 had a pit buck. All that stuff I mentioned, most ponies don't even use half of that. They just use it to tune into the Stable's broadcast, listen to the sweet, sweet voice of Val the Remedy in the evenings with the latest school singing competitions during the day. The Stable had two soccer leagues, one which allows sats, and one which prohibited it. Otherwise, most ponies paid their pit bucks almost no attention at all. The Overmary issues at each pony their own pit buck on the day of their cutie mark party. Usually, a day or two after you get the mark on your flanks that tells every pony what makes you special, what you're destined to be good at. Once it shows, the Overmare knows what work to assign you. You know your place in the stable. So no, I was not thrilled that what made me special was something that every pony had, which was a lot like being told I wasn't special at all. Sure, getting a pit buck as my cutie mark could have meant I was destined to become an awesome pit buck repair filly or something. But in reality, it was like getting a cutie mark of a cutie mark. It didn't help that I was the last pony to get her cutie mark. Not surprising in retrospect. Kind of tough to find what you're supposed to be good at when what you're supposed to be good at is something you don't get until you found what you're supposed to be good at. So I tried everything. I even tried to invent new things. As a unicorn pony myself, my innate magic allows me a level of fine manipulation that earth ponies don't enjoy. Any pony can hold a key in their teeth and open a lock, but using multiple tools in a very delicate operation, that requires precision levitation. So I decided to learn to pick locks with a bobby pin and a screwdriver. And I was even getting pretty good at it. Unfortunately, it didn't get my cutie mark. It just got me in a lot of trouble. I even, to my humiliation, went through the cat. The 
cutie mark aptitude test in the hopes it would guide me to what made me special. But no, my cat was utterly average with only marginally higher scores in a couple of areas, indicating that I might be suited for work as a pit buck technician or a stable loyalty inspector. Two options I should note that were even less impressive when you consider that it was generally expected that unicorn ponies would go into either technical or administrative work. That is, except the unicorn ponies who are natural artists, like Valve the Remedy. As I said before, our inherent magic allows us the sort of fine manipulation that technical work demands. Likewise, the Overmare and her government were always unicorn ponies. It is the Overmare's unicorn magic, after all, that creates the false sunlight used to grow our underground apple orchard. And while our apples might not look like those beautiful red things in the old books, they are what keep us alive. It was only because they let me try my hooves at both positions that I gained access to a pit buck before receiving my own. Otherwise, I might have never have gotten my cutie mark. Oh, my name is Little Pip. Go figure. I was given the name because I was the youngest and the smallest, and even my mother had the good sense not to call me Pipsqueak. Not that I don't love her, but when a Philly's cutie mark is a glass of hard apple cider. Anyway, funny how names like that turn out sometimes. Pleased to meet you. Here's my story. I would like to thank all of you for joining me in the readings of the intro and prologue to Fallout Equestria, also known as the original Fallout Equestria, as well as the vanilla story of the Fallout Equestria, you can say, spin-off. There are plenty of other series that are popular within the fandom, and just to name a few, we have Project Horizons, Pink Eyes, as well as Duck and Cover. There are probably dozens more of the quote-unquote popular stories, and there's probably even hundreds of other spin-offs that either have been completed or are still in the works or unfortunately have been abandoned. I would like to encourage all of you guys to give the more lesser known stories a chance because sometimes you might actually find a diamond in the rough. My plan is to read a chapter every other week and once I hit the three chapter mark, I'm gonna go ahead and do a bit of a review as well as a bit of a more afterthoughts of the story itself. Now, by all means, I am not a professional writer nor editor, but I wanna go ahead and look at the story just simply as somebody that's reading it. Maybe just ask a few questions, propose a few theories, things of that nature. Just a bit of a taste of it, just going back and looking at how this story originally started on the second sentence itself, it's a bit awkward. And I quote, explain how I got to this place with these people. Nowadays, most individuals normally don't write people when describing either ponies or zebras, or griffins, or any other creature normally in fan fiction or in other works. They tend to just call them as ponies or griffins or zebras or etc. So just going back and seeing it from, you know, back in 2011, it's a bit awkward. Even if you see a lot of the stories from back in the day, they tend to be like that, where they just accidentally put in people or other words that more or less would describe something that a human would use in order to describe things, objects, personalities and characteristics and such. Another thing to mention is that Fallout Equestria mainly takes from Fallout 1, parts of Fallout 2, and a good portion of Fallout 3. So just to put that out there, everything else is going to be mainly readings. I'm not fully sure if I'm going to be putting 
any art, like a slideshow or anything like that. I'm gonna try to keep it simple. If I really have the time, I'll go ahead and maybe sketch a certain scene, hopefully without any spoilers in said scene. So you guys, if you guys would like to look at something, it'll be something nice. I would encourage all of you guys to listen to this up and coming series while doing something, you know, menial in a sense, whether if it's washing the dishes uh, or in my case, I like to listen to audio books or even just stories in general while painting models and such. So I ramble on for a little too much, but I'm just really excited that I'm getting back on the saddle again and creating content for the fandom that I really do love and enjoy. So as always, it has been a pleasure and I hope to see you all in the next video. Either have a good day, a good afternoon, or a good night. Thank you very much.